Welcome everybody. I would like to welcome you. Thank you for joining us today on behalf of Health Volunteers Overseas and the American Dental Association. I'd like to start off with a brief introduction of Health Volunteers Overseas or HVO. I've served as a member of the HVO Oral Health Steering Committee for the last three years, so I know a little bit about it and I'm happy to present about this and be here today. HVO is a not-for-profit organization committed to providing teaching and training to healthcare professionals in low-income countries to help improve oral health care worldwide. And it is not just limited to dentistry. We have many other medical and auxiliary health programs as well. Since 1990, the ADA has partnered with HBO on many global health initiatives. A lot of people may not be aware of that. It's definitely something that you can learn more about today and also on the ADA website. The success of HBO projects is dependent on volunteers who donate their time and expertise to provide training and education to their colleagues around the world. HBO is reliant on the support of our collaborating associations as well. Cultivating strong partnerships and developing bilateral collaborations is an integral part of HBO's ethical and sustainable model for global health work. We would like to thank the ADA for their continued support and partnership over the last 31 years. During today's webinar, we will highlight one of HBO's most successful dental partnerships, which is with the Dooley Kell Hospital Dental Department in Nepal. In 2014, HBO began sending volunteers to Dooley Kell Dental School to help the faculty grow their educational programs in dentistry, dental hygiene, and dental assisting. The volunteers also assisted the Dooley Kell dental faculty, who, like our own U.S. faculty, are always seeking to learn and improve their knowledge and teaching techniques. Many volunteers have traveled to Nepal to accomplish this over the years. That is until the COVID-19 pandemic hit, as we all know all too well. I, we won't make you all relive the year 2020, don't worry, not today. <laughs> But the pandemic really has changed how volunteers are able to work globally to improve oral health. International volunteers have been presented with a myriad of new travel restrictions, challenges, and program management issues. Today, you will learn about how HVO and Dooley Cal Dental School work together to identify alternative solutions to continue their partnership and how the project grew into a permanent hybrid volunteer model that will still be utilized going forward. At this point, it's with great pleasure that I'd like to introduce, tell you a little bit about our two speakers today, Dr. Brian Hollander and Dr. Dashrath Kafle. Dr. Brian Hollander is currently the HVO Nepal Program co-director, along with co-director Royan Royer. He's an American dentist who actually lived and practiced dentistry for 29 years in Kathmandu, Nepal. Since leaving Nepal, he's been living and working in Alaska as a public health dentist. He spends much of his time traveling by plane to remote Alaskan villages to provide much needed dental care. In 2013, he became the Nepal program co-director at HVO and began working with Dr. Kafle to send volunteers to teach at Dooley Kell Dental School. His dedication to global and public health was a true inspiration. Dr. Dashrath Kafle, our second speaker, is professor and head of the orthodontic department at Dooley Kell Dental School in conjunction with Kathmandu University. He has been associated with Dooley Kell Dental School for more than 16 years and been significantly, he significantly contributed to the transformation of a single unit dental clinic to a large and thriving postgraduate center for dental education. Talk about dedication, just realize right now it's 3.45 in the morning in Nepal and here he is, he is awake and he's ready to present. Uh, I know I can barely stay up past 9 p.m., so it's very impressive in my book that he is with us at this time of day. So without further ado, I will turn it over now to Dr. Brian Hollander. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, namaste, everybody. Thank you for joining us. It's really an honor for me to be here with you today, and thanks for taking the time to learn about our project. I'm gonna start by giving you a brief history of my dental journey because it serendipitously leads to the start of the HVA, HVO oral health program in Nepal. So after dental school, I spent two years as an army dentist in Germany. This experience sparked my interest in different cultures and led to a three year journey around the world, traveling, working and volunteering in many countries. It started with a four month volunteer project in Cameroon, West Africa, and ended almost three years later when I was working in Australia. 
My favorite stop along the way was definitely Nepal. When I returned from a, a trek up to the Everest base camp, the uh, Peace Corps director at the time had arranged where I could see embassy patients and Peace Corps patients at a local hospital. And then when I left Nepal, I drew a plan for a dental clinic on a piece of scratch paper and gave it to the American embassy doctor. So when I returned to Oregon, uh, I'd been out of school five years. I was probably the poorest dentist in America, but definitely one of the happiest. I was trying to decide where my dental career would go when all of a sudden I got a letter from the American embassy saying that they had built the clinic that I drew on that piece of paper and asked me if I wanted to come back to start the clinic. I found a letter I wrote to him in 1980 and I said, I would definitely like to come back and I promise I will spend at least two years getting the clinic up and going. Well, those two years turned into 29 years. I met my wife, Judy, in Kathmandu. We raised our two children in Kathmandu. And I had a very interesting and rewarding dental practice for all those years. Um, that's this, now, this is where the serendipitous part uh, starts. Dr. Ram Shrestha, a young Dulikel raised and Australian trained doctor, came back to Nepal and started Dulikel Hospital in 1996 with the goal of improving the medical care in Nepal. When I first met Dr. Ram, he invited me up to the dental, to the hospital to meet Dr. Kafle and to see their dental clinic. Um, when I, Dr. Kafle and I immediately became friends and I recognized what a tremendous person he was. Now we'll jump again to 2013. Uh, Judy and I had moved back to Alaska in 2009, and I became a member of the Health Volunteers Overseas uh, Steering Committee, Oral Health Steering Committee. And we were looking for another site, and so guess who I recommended? Uh, Nepal. So, so in, what happened is I traveled back to Nepal, and I discovered that Dulikel Hospital had started a dental school. I didn't even know this at the time. They were in their second year. Um, and I, I was just excited. Dr. Kafle was now an orthodontist and he was an instructor at the school. So I talked to him about starting a, problem, a project with HVO and he just loved the idea of, of American volunteers coming and helping teach it at the hospital. So at this time, the HVO, Nepal Oral Health Program was born. Um, the whole goal all along has been to improve the dental education in Nepal and improve dentistry in Nepal. Uh, since 2014 to 2019, we've had 28 volunteers travel to teach in the dental school. I contribute the success of this program to the dedication of these volunteers who travel halfway around the world, give up their practice for a couple of weeks and uh, volunteer in Nepal, and to the dedication and compassion of Dr. Kofle, making sure that they all have a good trip there and that it's worthwhile. Uh, all the all the volunteers have returned from their assignments with praise for the dental school, the faculty, the students, and Dr. Kafle. They all talk about the very rich culture of Nepal and the friendliness of the Nepalese people. More than one volunteer has returned saying, Brian, I think I received much more than I gave. So things were going really well, and then COVID hit in 2000. 20 at the beginning of January, Nepal had its first case of COVID on somebody returning from Wuhan. In February, we had to cancel our first HVO volunteer trip. Uh, and then soon after that, HVO canceled all their international trips worldwide, including five volunteers who were scheduled to go to Nepal that year. And then in March, March 24th, Nepal went into a nationwide lockdown. This was a very severe lockdown where people were, were required to stay in their houses. All international flights were canceled. And China, both China and India, uh, closed their borders between Nepal. 
So obviously the Dooley Kell Dental School had to, had to close. But the instructors and Dr. Coughlay got together and they decided they could keep the curriculum going by giving Zoom classes for the students. And then soon after that, I talked to Dr. Coughlay and we, we wanted to keep HVO, the HVO program going and sending or having volunteers participate. So that's when we started the online program. Uh, we've kept that up, up till this time right now. So Julie Kell started their online lectures in April. We ended up uh, we ended up starting our HVO lectures about the same time. And then in July, the lockdown was lifted. Uh, the colleges remained closed. So obviously, H or the dental school had to uh, start a kind of a hybrid method where some students would come for some classes, but a lot of it was online. And then in, it was in September that, that the Dooley Scal the Dooley Kell Dental School really opened up and started doing that more of the hybrid where some would come back. We continued having the HVO lectures during this time. Things were going well. And then you probably read about in India this last April, the COVID really spiked and it was spiking the same time in Nepal. So they did another nationwide lockdown and the, the school had to close again. So you can see how it's been a tough to keep a, a school going, but the online lectures have made it happen and the HVO lectures have really helped them in their curriculum. Um, this September, the Nepal started to ease their restrictions Students came back to school to prepare for their univers university exams. And, uh, and they're slowly they're getting back to having students come back to school. They started with the older, the fourth and fifth year classes. By November, they hope to have all the students back in school. So how did we recruit uh, the volunteers? In the beginning, HVO sent out a letter to all previous volunteers who had traveled to Nepal, asking them if they wanted to participate in the Zoom lectures. And this worked really well. Uh, started Dr. John Kanusik had traveled to Nepal in 2015, and he ended up giving his first lecture in April of 2020, and it gave, ended up giving a series of six lectures. So that worked well. And then whenever a volunteer reached out to HVO, even if they didn't request Nepal, they were sent to me because we had this program going where we were sending or having volunteers give lectures. And this worked well too. We've got some great volunteers, doctor like Dr. Zablatsky gave a three part series on tobacco and cessation and effects on oral health. Um, Dr. Sumar Lakani gave a series of six pedo lectures. Uh, so that worked really well. And then sometimes volunteers just by word of mouth uh, recruited other volunteers. I know Dr. Kanyusik gave a lecture at the University of Minnesota or a talk on his HVO experience. And it ended up that two of his colleagues uh, volunteered to give some Zoom lectures, which was really nice. So once the volunteers were approved, they were in contact with Doc, I put them into contact with Dr. Coughlay and they worked back and forth to get the exact topic and the time of the lecture. As you know, it's three o'clock in Nepal right now. So Nepal is 12 to 13 hours ahead of, of us in the States, depending where you are. In the beginning, Dr. Coughlay used the free Zoom lecture that we all probably used in the beginning. We're, we're becoming better at Zoom now. But this was problematic because after 40 minutes, if you remember this, the lecture or the Zoom would time out. And then Dr. Coughlay would have to resend out another uh, invitation to the students, and the students would have to log back in. So after that, they switched to a where you paid and could stay longer uh, on the Zoom for as long as you wanted. And then some of our volunteers worked for universities and they were able to use their Zoom account. But now HVO has developed a remote education interface called REI. And this will do away with all the logistical problems and make easy access for the volunteers, students, 
and the students. Uh, it'll just be a press of a button and everybody can get on and see the lecture live or see it later when it's recorded. Uh, Dr. Coffley will have more to say about this, so I'm going to turn the presentation over to him right now. So it's it's really a pleasure for me to introduce to you Dr. Coffley, my friend and on-site coordinator for the HVO Nepal Oral Health Program. Besides being the reason the HVO Nepal Program is a success, he is also the kindest person I know. Dashrath? Thank you, Brian, and good evening, everyone. I'm Dashrat Kafle. I'm from Nepal, and I would like to thank ADA and Health Volunteer Overseas for giving us this opportunity. I will be talking on behalf of Dulik Hill Dental School and all the faculties and students. So I would like to present with the immense gratitude actually to the volunteers and to the organization who is supporting. Gratitude for helping to educate the students and faculties, <clears throat> excuse me, and actually gratitude for changing the lives of hundreds of students actually. We started this program in 2013 and so far many students have been graduated and we intake 50 students in one batch. And we have the gratitude of helping the people and helping faculties to train more students. We started in 2000, end of 2013. That was the first assignment was in 2014. So far as Brian explained, 28 overseas volunteer assignment has been completed. We have trained 500 students, as well as trained 27 colleagues also, that is 27 faculty members. And out of this partnership, the volunteers, they could present in three national conferences in Nepal of the dental, Nepal Dental Association. Apart from that, five specialty conferences. One of the volunteer, he gave very good advanced life support training. Very fortunately, we, over the period of time, we could receive more than 50,000 US dollar of donation in various forms and more than 40,000 US dollar dental materials and four scholarships for our students, our faculties and staffs. The impact of ADA in Nepal is huge, actually. We follow American and British books. We teach our students in English. So we try to teach them in English. And in Nepal, we read a lot about ADA and its guidelines. However, our students benefit from the firsthand experience of the dentist who follow ADA guidelines every day in their practice. You know, we were trained in South Asia, and we also read about ADA guidelines. But personally, it is very difficult to practice those, or we don't have the culture of practicing. But our students are on the benefit side. When the volunteers, American volunteers are in Nepal, they students have the opportunity to learn from them firsthand. And besides that, our students have developed a way of thinking beyond just our common dentistry or beyond just Nepalese dentistry. And it is not only rewarding for the students and faculties at the site, but sometimes for the volunteers, it is rewarding to help students in need in low resource countries like Nepal. Additionally, volunteers develop a very special bond with students, faculties, and culture in Nepal. And international volunteering offers a new perspective of the world. Probably volunteers see the different life of the students, life of the people in different cultural scenario, and probably that will have long-term impact in their life also. 
Uh, moving next, he is Dr. John, and he has volunteered with us one physically, once physically, then he gave series of online lectures for our residents, undergraduate students. He presented two times in our speciality conferences. Let's hear a video testimony from Dr. John. Greetings. My name is John Kenyusik, and I've had the opportunity to serve as a volunteer at a number of health volunteers overseas sites as an orthodontist. My most recent HVO visit was to Dulacal Hospital in Nepal working with Dr. Kafli and his faculty at the affiliated dental school. The dental school provides an excellent level of care for patients from a wide area in Nepal. My on-site experience consisted of consulting with Dr. Kafli and his colleagues on patient care teaching general orthodontic concepts to undergraduate dental students, and working with Dr. Kafli and his faculty at the orthodontic graduate level. The textbooks and lectures typically are in the English language at the dental school, and I found communication with the students and the faculty to be quite comfortable. Nepal is a physically beautiful country and the wonderful Nepalese people are gracious and a delight to collaborate with. I've told Dr. Hollander and Kafli that if feasible, I would return to Nepal and Dulakel monthly as the experience there was so personally rewarding for me. But with the great distance and now the COVID pandemic, those travel plans have been delayed. A positive aspect of COVID, however, is the initiation of consulting and teaching with HVO in Nepal remotely. I've had the opportunity to give a number of presentations to students and colleagues in Nepal through HVO. In the near future, HVO is planning on having remote patient consultation sessions, as well as additional remote presentations on a wide range of topics in dentistry. I'm looking forward to participating in some of these sessions. I recommend that you give consideration to the HVO volunteer program in oral health. And if not traveling to one of the many HVO site locations, perhaps through the remote program with HVO. If you have any questions about Nepal, please contact HVO or Dr. Brian Hollander. It also would be my pleasure to share my experiences with HVO in Nepal with you. So don't hesitate to contact me at johnkenyusik at gmail.com. Uh, now, moving to the next, I would like to, we have many volunteers who had changed our lives actually, but I should not forget Dr. Matt Fisher he came he came to nepal probably many times but he volunteers with he volunteered with us only once and his visit was so impactful that he gave lectures series of lectures to the pediatric specialist and he brought a lot of materials during his visit and he went back but he was supposed to come back to Nepal, but at the same time, the lockdown happened and he had to cancel. Somehow we lost the contact. One fine day, he contacted me and he said that Dr. Kafle is, I am not able to come to Nepal, but I would like to help the students and faculties. And his idea was that he sponsored all the faculties and all the postgraduate residents of all the specialities for all American conferences. For example, American Association of Orthodontics, American Association of Prostodontics, Periodontics, Pediatric Dentists, Trauma, what not actually. For the last two years, he has been sponsoring all our faculties and students 
he finds the courses himself and he sends email to the associations. He pays the bill on our behalf and we are allowed to join the virtual lectures. In fact, physically, it would not have been possible for us to travel to US and attend those wonderful lectures. But with his generosity, we all the faculties and students could join it and we will never forget him and we have such volunteers we have many volunteers like this so thank you dr matt it was great great learning experience for us and everybody appreciate this moving to the next these are the number of virtual lectures we conducted during last one year of period after we started e-volunteering Then uh, there is one small, you know, uh, how did we transition or how we moved from physical to virtual training? Virtual was kind of, you know, we thought that we cannot go to the virtual platform because we don't have in stable internet connection and not all people have the accessibility to the internet. That was our thinking, but slowly when, after the pandemic started, we had to switch into the virtual platform because otherwise we would be compromising the academic year of the students. Of course, the Likhil Dental School will never do that. We, we always try to help the students graduate in smoothly. So, as Brian explained, initially we didn't know about the Zoom and other webinar platforms. We started and we didn't know how to mute and unmute and how to, everything was messed up. But slowly we learned this technique and we started uh, with our own personal account, which expired after 40 minutes, but later university paid certain amount for the Zoom account. But after the introduction of REI, which is starting of, uh, which is started by HBO, the online education was very, very helpful. And this is remote education interface, which is started with HBO. With this, we just need to send the website link to the students and they can click and join. For us, it is very easy. We don't need to use our personal account or even the university account. We can directly log in through SBO account. And for the volunteers also, I found it very convenient. You know, they can join as a panelist and they can start giving the lecture. And more importantly, these lectures are recorded with the permission of the volunteers, and we can play again and again to the next batch of students. You know, that is the beauty of having this uh, online webinar. And these days, informing students about and faculties about these e-lectures is not difficult at all. We have different social media like Viber, WhatsApp, and Facebook. And importantly, we don't only inform our students when there are important lectures or specialty lectures, we would like to invite all the colleagues all over Nepal. And we do that through Facebook and messenger groups. Sometime during the volunteers giving lectures, we have more than 300, 400 participants listening to the lecture at the same time and benefiting, which might not be possible on site. We, limit the students to 50 and 60, but this is possible to explore and reach to as many students and colleagues as possible. That is the beauty and that is the necessity for the developing countries like Nepal. The success of col our collaboration is huge actually. Probably it would be too short to explain everything about it, but the collaboration with SPO has empowered the students a lot. And the, it gives them the exposure to the dentistry practice from around the world. As I explained, it is 
students have the ability to see the dentistry from different perspective. That has the impact later on their career. They get the job easily. And about the dentistry, the way they teach other people, the way they treat the patient, they, the way they talk to the patient, that is totally different after the collaboration with SBO. And we have seven, eight years of collaboration, and that has produced huge impact on the students. And even with us, you know, we feel we are more empowered. We feel we are more trained and more skilled. And that is the truth. Of course, every opportunity has challenges and advantages also. I think more than challenges, it has more advantages. The accessibility is use benefit factor. Learning is just a click away. We are, you know, hours and hours away from each other and miles and miles away from each other. But with just a click, you give the lectures to us and hundreds of us, we can hear you. That is the beauty of this collaboration. And we could increase the number of meaningful e-learning assignments and we can we can reach out to the volunteers and they can plan immediately their time and we go to the students and of course it has reduces the financial cost but it's still meaningful work which means that one of the volunteers i requested him sir can you please come back again he said that rather i will sponsor or i will donate that money for the dental school and I will give the lectures online. And he was a little bit old also. And it is better for environment also. However, the biggest challenge is dentistry is hands-on skill. Until and unless we transfer the knowledge into the hands of the students, still we are incomplete. And I miss having those skill transfer. Maybe in the future, we should jump into hybrid kind of volunteering. Probably you can keep lectures for some time to the students and plan for short rather than three weeks or two weeks volunteers, probably one week of physical on-site volunteering. And relationship development, probably when you are physically present with the students and faculties, probably that is more closer and we know, we come to know each other, not only about the educational or academic things, we come to know about so many personal things also, and that brings us closer. And uh, the challenge is difficult to schedule across the time zones. And probably for that, we can have the recorded lectures also. And for us, it is not difficult to wake up in the morning and listen to the lectures, our meaningful lectures. That is necessity for us. Uh, the skill and knowledge we really try to acquire. Now, she's Dr. Sumita. She's one of my colleagues. She's pedodontist and head of the department. Let's hear her experience with e-learning. Namaste. I'm Dr. Sumita Upadhyay, and uh, I'm a faculty in pediatric dentistry department in Kathmandu University School of Medical Sciences, Thule Hill. Uh, with the collaboration of Health Volunteer Overseas with Kathmandu University School of Medical Sciences, it has been doing tremendous job in uplifting the quality of health uh, education uh, for the students as well as the faculties with the uh, help of uh, highly qualified volunteers. Uh, even at the time of COVID-19 pandemic, SBU conducted a series of webinars for our students as well as the faculties. At the time, we also could attend and present in the various international conferences. Uh, clinical materials and equipments which is really helpful for our daily clinical works. We are very much 
uh, thankful to SBO. We want to thank you from the bottom of our heart with whatever you are doing. It will ultimately uh, help in uplifting the quality of dental education for our students, help in the professional development of the uh, health professionals, and ultimately we believe that it will help in uplifting the uh, quality of healthcare for the population of Nepal as a whole. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you, Dr. Sumi. And apart from that, you can read the slide also. You know, she's not the only one, she's the faculty, but there are many first year, second year, till final year and interns, postgraduates. The impact is huge. And you can see that we got a peek into dentistry outside Nepal, got to know the practical things that we would not get from the course book. And many volunteers, they have personal tips and tricks to better dentistry. Of course, we all have. And if we transform, transfer this to students, that is the blessing. And implying thread theoretical knowledge into practice. This course is definitely a backbone for my future practices. One of the uh, participants said that online lectures are equally effective as in-person lecture. Moreover, it can be attended by many people and provides effective theoretical knowledge on various subjects. And one of the participants, he said that all the lectures were practical based and were very informative. I will definitely, it will have definitely help me to improvise my practical practice. Thank you so much, everyone. It means that the volunteers, they gave the practical aspects while giving the lectures also. That was so kind of them. And moving to the next now, uh, recently we have learn that online education and online volunteering is also feasible option and viable option. Probably whether the pandemic will be with us or not, this mode of education is going to be with us and we will continue. Probably it will come into different modalities, probably the hybrid modality. Recently, after discussion with our dean and the university, we have incorporated e-lectures into our curriculum so that that would be part of the uh, curriculum. What we will do is we will share the curriculum. We have shared the curriculum with SBO and there are hundreds of topics. The volunteers can pick their preferred lectures and offer to the students. Additionally, not only going to the dental students and dentists, we knew that dental assistants, the skill was very poor in Nepal. Still it is poor. We really do not practice four-handed and six-handed dentistry. So we thought with the pilot project of SBO in 2019, we trained 18 dental assistants working at Dulikal Dental School and the impact was huge. Now the assistants are so much empowered. They know the skills and I must thank HBO, Dr. Brian and Royan for starting this project. And moving to the next, we will have three months of, three months of, excuse me, three months of uh, certification program for the dental assistants. Apart from that, we have realized that the students, postgraduate training students benefit a lot from such collaboration and thinking postgraduate students in mind, health volunteer overseas and the American volunteer faculties as well as university. If there are any possibilities, we would like to combine all these three institutes together for training postgraduate students in Dulikhil Dental School. Probably this is the last slide for me. And main goal of our institute, Dulikhil Dental School is to be number one dental school in South Asia. Number one in education, number one in training the students, number one in treating the patient. We want to produce a passionate dental surgeons or dentists from this institute. 
and collaboration with HBO and ADA probably brings closure. It has already produced huge impact into the life of students and faculties. So we are so much grateful and thankful to HBO, ADA and present and to be volunteers and those people and families and supporters who are associated with us directly and indirectly remotely. Thank you so much for this opportunity to present into ADA and HBO platform. We are so grateful, grateful to all of you. Now I would like to hand over this pre uh, presentation to Dr. Elizabeth. Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you both, Drs. Hollander and Kapile, for sharing your knowledge and experience with us. I, I um, know there's so many different avenues that can happen as a result of the pandemic, actually, and all the new e-learning and virtual programs that are out there. I can see by the presentation the variety of programs that we're able to offer this way. So it's really exciting to have a new platform available and see where this leads. I know a lot of us are really excited about it. I think also many of us in this industry may be questioning when we might be able to travel again. Um, so whether it's restrictions or even if you're not comfortable traveling for a while, that's another factor. Even if everything is travel like normal, you may not feel comfortable. I know I don't like to risk any quarantine having my uh, family home in one house any more than we need to at this point. So that's a, a factor for a lot of people. This is a great way to get involved and still volunteer on a global level. Um, I can also briefly comment on the program. I was fortunate enough to participate early in the series, the e-learning e program while it was developing. And um, when I did work with Dr. Samita, who we saw on the video, um, we did a series of pediatric dentistry lectures and it was a wonderful experience for everyone. There was a lot of back and forth clinical discussions. We learned, they learned, everyone involved got a lot out of it. So I, I really like the way it represents, it represents a, a new model um, for global health, given all the changes that we've seen from the pandemic. Um, in summary, I think I'd like to say we I'll sum, summarize with, we all know that a well-trained healthcare workforce is essential for a strong healthcare system in any country. Um, each and every HBO volunteer and every healthcare worker or student trained moves us closer to our vision that we all share, a world where everyone everywhere has access to high quality oral health care delivered by local healthcare providers. I think that is a very long-term sustainable model for global health work. The work done by HBO is also dependent on generous donors. Please visit the HBO website. You can see on your screen now, it's there. If you'd like to contribute a one-time or recurring donation to help improve global oral health, any donation is appreciated. Doesn't matter what the size, everything is, is very appreciated in these efforts. Equally important is your time. If you are interested in volunteering in the e-learning program, please reach out to HBO. Uh, volunteer recruitment is an ongoing thing. And as we've seen tonight with virtual platforms, even Zoom, as basic as Zoom, everything, there's so much possible many volunteers can be recruited and needed to expand the global health education and training programs. Um, if you're interested in other global health vol uh, volunteer opportunities, please visit the ADA website and they offer resources to help you with this search. So I do want to thank you all for your time and attention today. We'll start the Q&A session of the webinar now. Um, you can type any questions or comments. It may start a discussion with our speakers. Any comments are welcome in the Q&A box. Um, I'm going to check those and see if I can direct them to the correct speaker to answer it. I know I got I got one or two in a personal message to me. I'll check those and um, get those out there in a moment. And let me check them right now. If we somehow can't answer it or need more resources, uh, we will collect your email address and get back to you after the webinar. Okay, I'm going to check. All right, let me check this out. Here is a question I have from, I'm gonna to try to pronounce your name correctly, Devin Schroff. How can we contact the faculty at their dental school directly? 
Happy to help with pediatric dentistry related talks and lectures if needed. Okay, thank you. I'm gonna write down your, uh, we'll, we're gonna note your email address there. Um, definitely HBO will be happy to reach out with you and talk about volunteer opportunities and how you can be a part of this. I know, and I was also helpful helping out with the pediatric dentistry lectures and I know we can do more and would gladly welcome your help. I have, as I said, one or two on my PM, my personal email. Let me pull those up really quick so I can get those answered for you guys. Someone asked if volunteers can begin to travel to Nepal, will you continue to use the virtual volunteering in, and in-person volunteers? How would that work? So I would say, Dr. Hollander, are you able to comment on the future use of e-learning platforms in addition to if everyone's able to travel again? Yeah, I think uh, Dashrath commented on this when he said that perhaps the volunteer could give a lecture or two before he goes to Nepal to, to introduce himself to the, to the students. And then there's always gonna be the people who can't travel but have so much knowledge. So I think, I think we'll keep this e-learning program going for forever and uh, it'll just get better with time and expand into different ideas that volunteers could bring to it on how we could make it better but it will keep going for sure great i think that's i think it's a wonderful way i've heard discussions myself uh, and my limited involvement of having the virtual e-learning programs going with volunteers before they ever even step foot on the airplane to go anywhere. I think that's a really good way to get to know the host partners, um, do initial needs assessments. I know HBO is very strong in their needs assessments. And when they partner with someone, making sure that it's a partnership, it's bilateral, it's, it's not driven by any HBO agenda, a needs assessment with the local partner, what are their needs, what are the challenges, barriers, things like that, and enablers. Um, so I think this virtual platform is going to set up a lot of ability to do that before volunteers even travel. I do have some more questions. Again, I might uh, check these. How many HVO oral health projects are active right now? That's a good question. Brian, do you want to answer that? Or I, I, it, I can speak to that if you want. It's... Um. I'll go ahead. We have uh, four projects active right now, Laos, uh, Nepal, Tanzania, and Peru. Um, so Lauren, correct me on this. I don't think we're sending volunteers to Peru and Tanzania right now, but we are doing the recruiting for Laos and Nepal. That is correct. Lauren is the volunteer placement coordinator at HBO, and she is, of course, on the webinar, so she can maybe comment on that as well. Yeah, so right now we are recruiting for pre-recorded lectures with our project in Lao, um, and obviously in person, or uh, we're doing the live lectures in Nepal, and right now our projects in Peru and Tanzania are not recruiting for e-learning but we're looking forward to, once we start traveling, sending volunteers again. Great, and um, Lauren, while you're here, there's a question that you might be able to help with. Um, let me find it in the box. It says, <laughs> well, one I thought was really nice from, who is this from, Tom? Tell me more about signing doctors up for seminars and paying for it. That's really kind, <laughs> that's a really nice comment. We will try to get back to you on that. Um, but this is a question, Lauren, you might be able to answer, please. It says from Jennifer Smith, thank you so much. I would like to know if these educational programs developed by HBO would be available to NGOs working with dentists in other countries. And she goes on to say that our dental teams are almost exclusively Honduran practitioners. That's so, something that we would definitely love to speak with you about. Uh, if you'd like to send an email to um, hvo.org uh, through our information comment box, we'll be able to look into that for you. Great. 
Let me just finish up and make sure that I'm not missing anything. I think that might be it. We appreciate all the nice comments everyone wrote. Appreciate those. Um, if nobody has any more questions or comments, I think we can wrap it up tonight. And just again, thank you all for your time tonight. Uh, maybe Dr. Kafway, you can get some more uh, snooze sleeping in before yeah. you have to start your work day. <laughs> no, Dr. Elizabeth, uh, there is one question in Q and A. And oh, I missed that. that Oh, I'm a general thank dentist. You. Yeah, this totally is a very nice question, actually. That. Yeah. Kevin <laughs> Burgart, I'm a general dentist yeah. and have prime have been primarily a clinician rather than instructor. I don't have PowerPoint presentations, but 40 years of clinical experience. I volunteered in Haiti for 10 years and have made 15 in-person trips. Could how could I fit into the HBO model? Well, you would fit in just perfectly. Um, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You don't have to have PowerPoint skills. That doesn't have to be your thing. Um, there's a lot of support. HBO does an amazing job of supporting these programs. I think your interest in volunteering is enough at this point, and we can also reach out to you. Um, Dr. To Elizabeth, you maybe I will I will answer his answer yeah. this question. We we actually love to have you actually you yeah, have you 40, <laughs> year, 40 years of clinical experience which is more than reading 50 books textbooks so you we don't need powerpoint we just need you you know your skill transformation to the young generation that is why this collaboration is very very important and has been rewarding for nepal thank you so much Dr. Stephen. Yes, thank you. I, I'm going to comment on that too, Elizabeth. We yeah. have had volunteers who didn't really want to give a lot or lectures. And it's they were very, extremely valuable working on the floor in the clinic and working hands-on with the dentist or the dental students. And that is a tremendous way to transfer knowledge by uh, working in the clinic. Mm -hmm. And I know many people are hoping that it will be back in person, at least to some extent. So clinical teaching we're still anticipating will be much needed. Okay. And I don't see any more Q&A, any more questions, comments. Feel free to put those. In the, in the comment uh, is from Dr. Patrick, I was supposed to go to Peru ah. in June. Yep. So he has, uh, I'm willing and able to do lectures, e-lectures. And we, <laughs> yes, we will definitely reach to you, sir. Uh, maybe at the mm -hmm. end of the... We are recording that, all these. Yep, we're recording the names and emails of people that are putting this in. So feel free to do that. We'll record it all and we will follow up with you. Elizabeth, I think one of the big advantages of the REI where the lectures are recorded, that they could work in dental schools all over the world. I mean, it could, it could be geared at Nepal at first, but as you're talking about, uh, cutting it or materials or what, it's gonna, it's gonna translate to any dental school. So hopefully we can expand that. Yes, as long as the English language is understood uh, enough to, to do that, that's only language capability we have at the moment. Um, I did see another question by Matt Fisher. Can HBO and or the ADA advocate for American dental organizations and he lists a few, ADA, AOS, AOAE, AEPD, et cetera, to continue offering virtual, virtual conferences even after the pandemic, probably the hybrid model. I know, I think that's a great comment. And I think Dr. Coughley really spoke about the advantages of how much more attendance you can get with these seminars and annual conferences being available by Zoom and the, the virtual platform. So I do think that's a great idea and I do hope so. And I know we have representatives from the ADA here today listening and we will note these comments as well. And Matt Fisher, if we can figure something out concrete and we can try to follow up with you on that as well. Um, I haven't even looked ahead. I know AAPD is planning in-person um, in San Diego 
in May, but I'm not sure what kind of virtual components they're going to offer. Um, if Dr. Cuffley or Dr. Hollander, have you heard anything about this from the organizations or? I have not. Uh, no, I haven't, but we no. can follow up on that for sure. But I certainly hope they choose to maybe offer both. Yeah. It greatly increases access. So, um, okay, just double check. And Dr. Hollander, Dr. Copley, if you want to double check, I didn't miss anything. You were great, thank Elizabeth. You. Thank you very much. And thank, thank you all you. for listening. I, it was uh, it was really fun for us to spread this message about the volunteering in Nepal. And I want to once again say it wouldn't happen without Dr. Kofle. It's He's just done a tremendous job there. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, thank, thank you, you so everyone. much, everyone, for joining. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. Everybody have a good night and thank you for attending. <laughs>